Hey guys, and welcome back to the Callisto Pro School. Uh, doing a bit of post commentary this time because my microphone decided to not pick up my, uh, well, anything really. So, I have been playing this game quite a bit off camera, uh, trying to complete it, but I'm kind of finding my patience with this game running out <laughs> quite rapidly due to various different things that I'm sure we'll get into. So, yeah, we were trying to drain tank six, if memory serves. And uh, first thing I do here is just check, make sure um, we've got no money. We've spent all of the money so we can move on. Now, one thing that also uh, took me a bit of getting used to is going back to six inventory slots. Because, yeah, our inventory does actually get upgraded. It only gets doubled, but that gives you a lot more breathing. Well, kind of gives you a lot more breathing room. Um, obviously, the drawback of that is at the time your inventory gets doubled, you've got more weapons and you're carrying a lot more stuff. Anyway, especially treasure items. Having to go back and collect um, optional treasure items... Uh, so it gets very difficult and the shop the upgrade printing shop thingies get quite rare as well they get significantly more spread out it would seem as the game goes on which makes that it makes the fact you get your inventory upgraded not not the big win that you'd think it would be Anyway, always nice to have health injectors because they are worth it for selling, kind of. They're worth 100 credits. Oh, the top tier upgrades in this game get extremely expensive as well. But, you know, they do start becoming very useful. <laughs> as soon as you get up here, you're like, hmm, big area. What could possibly go wrong? Oh. Exercise uh, some brutality on this guy. I wasn't prepared for how quickly he went down. Because they get a lot spongier. The enemies are far, far spongier as we go on. I believe at this point I was shocked to find out that this Skunk Works gun only had two shells in it because that's not a lot. Further on in the game obviously we had upgraded that so it can hold more ammo. And I think I was talking about another one of my frustrations dealing with the weapon switching in this game with just how slow it is to switch between different weapons yep <laughs> that's what I realized wait a minute click click only five two shots so I believe I am actually on my personal game now I'm almost at the end of the game So I've experienced quite a bit of the story and I will say there's a section, I wasn't really enjoying this game up until one particular section that we haven't got to yet and uh, I'm really not looking forward to playing it again but we'll get into that a little bit later on. Uh, it definitely is always worth having a good look around these areas because they do have like optional collectibles, um, usually credits uh, and ammo, you know, ammo that you can't actually carry. I think there's a particular bit a little bit later on in this game as well, uh, in this video, where we actually... 
get to an optional kind of loot room. I guess that's what I've been calling them, just these loot rooms. And pretty much every time you get to a loot room, you can't pick up the stuff that's in it because you've got no inventory space. Yeah, I was trying to stamp on this guy's body, but I was also locking onto another one. Which happens. Okay. All quiet. Yeah, we've got like a loot box down there, which we can just about see. Now, the trouble with the, uh, what would you call them? I guess they're kind of, I don't know if I'd even call them um, jump scares. They don't really add anything to the game because they happen every 30 seconds. The jump scares are constant and unrelent uh, and relentless, I should say. Like every corridor you walk down, every bit of footing you walk down, you're gonna get that uh, like instrumental jig just play in your ear, and you're gonna get one or two, sometimes more enemies just rush you um, behind you, in front of you, uh, stuff like that. And the trouble is, it's not very effective at scaring you because it happens constantly <clears throat> there's a couple of times I think it happens in this video where you'll see I pick up ammo for a weapon but we don't get the ammo that's something that I have noticed also peep the uh, explosive barrel there or the explosive canister if you see one of those stuff's gonna jump out at you because it's placed there to help you. This is a bad little section here. Oof. Yeah, <laughs> that hurts. These big guys are tough. Yeah, he got me. He got me pretty bad. Now, uh, another thing I was saying about when we opened those chests. Yeah, sometimes it feels like these checkpoints put you way back. And they don't properly reset the world state either. Which is something that I've encountered quite a bit getting further into the game. You'll notice that the enemy there has come back. But I've had checkpoints later on in the game where I've been killed and been sent back to the checkpoint start. But... I've had... Oh, wait, I think someone's at the door. And we're back. Okay, so... I've completely lost my train of thought because we just had the landlord come down. Because uh, he's blown all of his electrics. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, I was saying about... Um, or what I was going to say. When we raid those loot chests. One thing that is kind of frustrating. Uh, and it happens with every long-winded animation in this game. Even when you think the animation has finished. You still don't get control of your character. This animation to bend down and open the loot box actually takes about 8 seconds, even though the animation only lasts about 5. So I was trying to demonstrate that here. So although you can hear the enemies uh, coming behind you, you can't turn around. So there's me trying to wrestle control back. Uh, 
and that is uh, pretty much applicable to like every animation in this game. There we go. God, I love those credits. Yeah, we didn't even harvest up all those goodies. Ah, look at that. We have a valuable item to pick up, but we've got no space. So in a way, it's kind of useful that we took some damage there. Because one nice thing is those medical sprays or medical injections are literally everywhere. And that does stay consistent throughout the whole game as well. There's way more health than you need. In fact, as you'll see as the series goes on, we actually end up using a lot of these medical sprays or medical injectors. I don't know why I'm saying medical sprays. What have I been playing recently? Medical sprays. Can't remember. Um, here we go. More enemies. Like 10 steps in the right direction and you've got enemies. But yeah, we will be using those uh, medical injectors as sellable items just because there's so many. These charging guys can be quite nasty. We're kind of lucky at the moment uh, that we're fighting weak enemies. The enemies get significantly stronger and spongier as the game goes on. There is a reason for it. That was nice as well. 99 credits from one enemy pickup. Because as I, I believe I said earlier anyway, uh, the upgrades start getting significantly more expensive. Bless you. <clears throat> now this is one of the f forks in the path, basically. So if we look through this door here, this is blatantly where we've got to go. So what we're going to do, <laughs> I'm explaining that there. We're going to go <coughs> straight ahead. Because generally, the, the formula for this game is you'll get to an objective, to somewhere where you're supposed to be going, but there will be like another tiny little exploration area. And that exploration area will always lead to a loot room. Always. Yeah, there, I was like, oh, a big scary noise because there's a monster running away. Ooh. Terrifying. Um, now the only trouble with these loot rooms is quite often when you get to them <sighs> you find a load of loot and a load of items that you can't actually pick up. Now I did watch a couple of reviews um, from I think it was like IGN or something. I think it was IGN and possibly GameSpot's reviews that start talking about how limited ammo and health pickups are in this game and I was thinking to myself I'm not sure we're playing the same game here because there's too much it's way too much I mean look everything we open there's ammo bullets health everywhere absolutely everywhere the biggest problem is you can't carry it all and it's not like you can come back later and come get it. Like a traditional survival horror game. It, say, for instance, we found some health or something here that we can't pick up. Well, in a lot of games, you could just leave it here and come back and get it later. But you can't with this game because when you've done the objective and moved on, that's it. You're done here. You never, ever come back. So it's a bit odd. But it's not really a survival horror game anyway. It, this is a sh this is a third person shooter brawler. There's no horror or survival aspect to it whatsoever. 
it's odd that it was sold as a survival horror game. Credits. You need a lot of them. So here we have our loot box. Now, a loot box generally contains ammo and then one valuable item. Nice. As we can see there. But the trouble is, as usual, we can't pick the item up <laughs> because we have no space. I. I don't know what their thought process was of just letting us have six inventory items. It doesn't work. You could get away with it with the original Resident Evil games because you always had the item boxes that you could drop your stuff into. Um, so, you know, if you, if you found some really valuable items, you could drop all your gear. If you knew the coast was clear, you could do an item run gather up everything you need and then carry on but you can't do that in this game because there's nowhere to put anything you you really are bent over a barrel and absolutely crippled with that inventory system now this bit is also pretty interesting and this happens a couple of times that I've noticed I don't know whether this is a bug or what but I'm trying to go back through this door because the first time I played this, um, I didn't have to take the fuse back out of this door to open that one. I don't know why it was weird, but the bug still kind of stays consistent here because even though we've taken the fuse out of that door, we can still go through it. So I'm not sure what that's about. You can see we tried to dodge there, but we couldn't because we were too close to the railing. That happens quite a bit. The dodge system doesn't always work when you get caught on the environment and you're you're, you're going to have a few situations later where you're going to get caught on the environment. It's unavoidable. But if I come back here, see? Even though we've taken the fuse out of the door, the door is still unlocked. We can still go through it. Oh, fuck myself. But like I said um, earlier... When I came through here originally, I didn't even need to put the fuse back in that one to open that door. So I don't know what's going on here. Now this I'm looking forward to seeing because this was a ammo glitch that I remembered. Yeah, see hand cannon ammo times three. Notice that we've got seven bullets in our gun. This gun holds ten. We've just picked up three. But the gun won't let us reload. And if we go into our inventory, we don't have any hand, can uh, hand cannon bullets. So those bullets have just vanished and disappeared into nowhere. And that's something that's consistent. <sighs> um, it happens a few times. I've picked up supplies and ammo and they've either become something different in my inventory or it just hasn't been anything. See look, now we pick up another three handgun bullets and we can reload. Don't know what that's about Chief, no idea. I 
But that's something that's really frustrating. There's actually a bit later on in the game where you're on an elevator and all around you there are loot boxes that are stuffed with items. Too many items, you know, you, you'll never be able to pick them up. There's so many. Um, and I assume that's done for a reason. I don't want to say too much, but there's a reason there's tons and tons of equipment there. But as soon as you get to your destination, all the items and everything in those loot boxes disappears. They just become empty boxes. It's... <sighs> and I don't know whether that was done so that you can't pick stuff up again. Or what. I was also curious at this door as well because I swear when I played this... Um, on my own private game that door was open I couldn't get it to work this time but I'm sure that door was open and I could go through it and it was a nice little cut through really weird but certainly coming back through this game um, to record it I have noticed a lot of little inconsistencies should we say that I had never noticed in any other kind of game. So of course we come up to a console, we need to find a code from a guard. That's how this bit works. Oh, that's how most of this game works. You come up to a console, you need to find the code off a guard. There's ammo and bits and pieces stashed around here as well. But look up there. Hmm. Isn't that delightful? Very delightful. Now peep just how many medical injectors there are around this area. So there's one there in this room. There's ammo dotted around this room as well. Now notice those explosive containers as well in that room. Explosive containers are always there for a reason. Um, you will never find an explosive container th that is there just for effect. So this I this place is literally full. We've already found one medical injector. There's another one in this room. UGC printing. Have a united day. There's another medical injector that we haven't encountered yet. It's through a room just out that door that we came in from. I think there's another medical injector. A little bit, yeah, there's one there. And there's one further on as well. And from what I've heard on the harder difficulties, they don't really change the amount of pickups there are. It just makes the enemies harder. So if we go up and through here now, look, straight away, there's another medical injector there. And a useless gravity battery thing. It really does get to the point where you, you've got to sell the medical injectors. Because you don't come back to these, these places. So you either leave them for the roaches or you sell them for 100 credits. And these batteries aren't really worth selling because they're only worth, uh, I think they're worth like 10 credits or something. Not sure why they're worth nothing. Could definitely hear a monster as soon as we walk, uh, came into this room. There's nothing here. <laughs> or is there? Oh, 
ammo as well is um, a resource for getting credits. I mean, how survival horror is that? You've got so much ammo and health, you're literally selling it for upgrades because you can't use it all. It's not very survival horror. He ain't dead, Chief. Exposed tentacles will cause enemies to mutate, so this is when enemies start getting much stronger and tougher. If, if an enemy has tentacles, and you don't do anything about it, uh, they will mutate into these massive great big things. And they are extremely tough. Now unfortunately, pretty much every enemy will start doing this. But here's my question. Where did that guy come from? If you thought maybe it's the cocooned guy, it wasn't. That enemy literally spawns out of nowhere and appears behind you. Even though they've literally given themselves the perfect excuse for that with that guy that they show you is not dead. It's just, it's just weird, man. It's stuff like that that just makes you think, oh, yeah, playing a video game. The only thing it uh, doesn't have is a score counter in the top corner. But yeah, that did make me laugh, that guy that just appeared out of nowhere. Now, as awesome as that audio log is, as he's explaining the tentacles there, um, where he says, smash him with the baton, that doesn't appear to do anything. From, from what I've tested, and from what I've played, you can't smash the tentacles with the baton, because you, they generally come out of their torso. Um, but... You, or their head or something, but you can't aim the bat on. Uh, it always just swings to the left or the right. It goes more for their limbs more than anything else. Uh, there's no aiming with the bat on at all. So you have to shoot the tentacles. And if you do shoot the tentacles, they go down very, very, very quick. So if you see one mutating, you've got to prioritize it. Now, the trouble comes in when you have multiple enemies here. Ah, yeah, this is where I'm trying to work out what to upgrade. The baton is always worth upgrading. Because the baton you've always got with you. I like upgrading the grip as well. The grip's really good. But upgrading these recharge speeds don't seem to help that much. I mean, I've got it on the second level, I think, which is the medium speed increase uh, or recharge speed increase, but it still takes ages for it to recharge. Now, upgrading the baton to do max damage really helps, and that counter upgrade that we're getting here as well is a really good move. <coughs> Because when you block by holding down S, the enemies essentially get a free hit on you and you do take damage. But by upgrading the block, it leaves them open to a huge counter attack. And you can also upgrade the block further 
so you always take damage it, it's odd that you always take damage from blocking but you can get it so the enemies pay quite a price for attacking you I'm still not 100% sure either if blocking works in a 360 around you. And it's about here I realised my microphone wasn't recording. Now, stealth killing enemies is quite a good shout because it's pretty much like a one hit kill. It also sounds like you're making a hell of a lot of noise when you do that, but you're not. It's actually a silent takedown, if you can believe that. You can literally do that right behind another enemy and they won't hear you. But of course, turning enemies into loot containers is great and all, if you can pick the stuff up. Yep, we got something new to fight. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching.